Welcome to the Amherst Planning Board meeting, Wednesday, January 29th, 2020, at 7, just after 7. Uh, let's see here. We will start with minutes, which I believe we have two sets. So I will first draw your attention to the November 6th, which is the first oldest. And I assume everyone has had a chance to look at it. These were emailed to us or mailed to us. Does anyone have any comments or changes? Janet? On, on page three, sorry. I, I thought we should add um, what, what Gordon Hall was, um, what was in his letter. And so I just thought about it. Where Ed, are you on page three? On page three, it says the board noted that a letter of opposition has been received from the abutting landowner, Gordon Hall. It's like kind of towards the bottom. Oh, the single line there? Do you want to have more added or something? Yeah, I just thought saying what was in the letter would be helpful to people um, and also make him feel heard if he ever read these minutes. Um, so I thought Gordon Hall raising his concern that his right of way over Riverside's property would be obstructed by a compost pile, which I think that was the gist of his complaint. Can you say again, raising his concerns His concern that his right of way over Riverside's property would be obstructed by a compost pile. Was that really his only concern? You know, he. I he, think there I, was a lot more than that. When he came and spoke, he uh, the next one or two later, he was concerned. About, he had some other things he was worried about. I think. He never came, and there was a letter, and it was pretty extensive. I can. Uh, can we look at that? I I couldn't find it in my. Because I think he had more issues than just a compost pile. Didn't from, like the idea of uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> he didn't like the idea of marijuana um, facility right. being located next to his property. Mm -hmm. So there were two, two issues. Yeah, I, thought he, I thought he did come and say he was worried that there was going to be illegal drugs sold or something. Am I making that up? Might have been someone else, but okay. it wasn't. Maybe that was somebody else, else then. Yeah. Okay. So you'll reference whatever it is in that so we could still make a motion after yes. you make that change. Janet, do you have any other additions? Does anyone else have any? Um, nope. Okay. So if I, uh, I oh, moved. nope. Yeah. So if there's a, a move. Uh, yeah. I'm going to move we Thank approve you. the minutes uh, as uh, um, um, adjusted. Or ad adjusted. Second. Well, it says it, but he wasn't there. It just refers to the letter again. So anyways, Chris, at that point, if you can, mm -hmm. it's a, great. Um, is there any other discussion? All in favor? Unanimous? Great. So we'll move to Maria. Yeah, it was quiet. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we'll move to the December 4th minutes that we received. And, oh yeah. Are there any comments, corrections? Can, can Jack. I have a couple minutes to scan? Sure, go for it. We can all rescan. I didn't get it in my packet. It was an addition. Is it? It's there. No worries.
So um, this is for the video. So uh, it was requested that someone have some time to scan the minutes that we are um, going to hopefully approve. So that's why we're just sitting here. Excuse me, it looks like Mr. Jemsek has finished. Oh, are you done? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> move, we, move we approve the minutes? Second. Second. Okay. Is there any more discussion or issues? None. All in favor? Pass the December 4th minutes. Great. Unanimous. Um, so we can now move on to the public comment period and um, this is a time where people can come forward and bring up something that is not on the current agenda. Is there anyone here to speak? Okay, I see no one, so that's great. We'll move on to item three, planning and zoning, uh, zoning subcommittee report. Since uh, zoning subcommittee did not meet, I assume there is nothing to report. Okay, we'll move down to item four, old business. We have some decision signing, and I believe we have two of those in our packet today. Um, Chris, uh, is there one you wanna do first? There's, uh, there are two decisions. One is the Amherst College decision for the Amherst College field renovation. Um, their public hearing closed on November 6th, so we have to um, file the decision by Next week, I think it's by Tuesday. Um, we're, we were a little bit lagging behind on that one because of the holidays. So anyway, um, that has been prepared and that is based on um, minutes that you did approve back in October and November, I believe. November. Oh, you know what? I just realized there was a mistake in the minutes, the first page. Um, refers to one public hearing and then a second public hearing and the date of the second public hearing is November 6th, not October 16th. So I'm going to make that change. That was on the minutes? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's on the, the decision. Okay. Um, that's right. And the bottom of page one, it refers to a second session of a public hearing and the <sighs> date of that is November 6th, not October 16th. Good catch. And you just approved the minutes for October, for November 6th, so um, that should be okay. So do you just pass that down for us yeah. to sign? This? Okay. Just. So, um, Gray Mullen needs to sign in two places. Thank you for reminding me. Talk about the second um, yeah, decision. Just so the second decision is for Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and you held a public hearing on that on December 4th, and you just approved the um, minutes from December 4th. So that one should be pretty straightforward as well. So I will pass that one along too. Thank you.
Okay, so uh, we can move on to um, item five, new business. Uh, A is planning board meeting schedule. Chris, I assume that's you. Um, you have a meeting scheduled <clears throat> for next week, um, February 5th. We'll be sending out the packet on Friday. And then you have another meeting scheduled for um, February 19th. On um, the 5th, you'll be hearing a continuation of the public hearing on 462 Main Street. And in addition to the site plan review application, we did receive a special permit application for um, alteration or enlargement of an existing non-conforming building. So you'll be um, opening that public hearing and having that um, proceed concurrently with the site plan review public hearing. I'm going to revise the development application report to explain this, so you'll get that in your packet. Oh, okay. um, other things that are coming up that night, um, we're hoping to um, have a, a discussion about the master plan update. Uh, so that's one big thing on the agenda. And um, the Chapter 61A um, withdrawal request that we received a number of weeks ago, um, that one is coming back. And Dave Zomek and I are going to put together a, a memo about that. And I also am going to send you some background information on Chapter 61A so you'll know um, a little bit more about this and how to respond to it. And on the 19th, you're having um, Mr. Mora come to speak to you about zoning. And I think there are a few other things on the 19th, but I, I'm, not, I'm not bringing them to mind right now. The Amherst Hills, Mike, if, if we have a... Amherst Hills, we're um, expecting that Amherst Hills will come on the 19th rather than on the 5th. We have some missing information that we're tracking down, and um, so the 19th seems like a better date. I've been in touch with... Tom Reedy about that, but I haven't heard back from him yet. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I got a little confused on the fifth. Um, it's 462 Main Street, and then is it a separate um, application for a different building coming in? And then is also the second question would be: Is the ZBA going to come and talk to us about the building on Route Nine and University Drive extension? So on 462 Main Street, you already heard, um, you already had a session on a public hearing on the site plan review, and it came to light um, that um, the applicant was changing the rear portion of the existing White House with the red shutters more than had been changed the first time when you heard this last summer. Um, so uh, the determination was made by the building commissioner that the applicant needed to file a special permit application to, um, to really essentially completely reconstruct or take down and build something new at that um, northern end of the existing white building with the red shutters. So um, it's, it's really a very simple application. And you will see. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway, you'll see pictures of the new building. I think you saw them last time, but um, you didn't focus on them. So, so this time you're going to focus, and it's not a separate application. Um, and I'm trying to incorporate issues about that and other things into a revised development application report, which you'll get in your packet. And the second thing you asked about was the um, University Drive South. So again, I've been in touch with Mr. Reedy, who represents uh, the applicant. and. Um, we had been hoping that they would come before the planning board on February 5th for um, a presentation and then to receive uh, recommendations from the planning board to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we haven't received anything yet from them. They've changed their plan since they first submitted it to the ZBA. The building is getting smaller. Um, I think they're shrinking the parking lot a little bit and they're pulling the project away from the wetland edges. So it is changing. So I'm not sure if um, the applicant is going to have something to put in your packets. And I've kind of dissuaded them for coming in at the last minute with drawings like on Tuesday and sending them to you. I've said, you know, that we really need them in the packet um, on Friday. And if they have them then, then 
we can put it on the agenda for the 5th. But if we don't have something to put in the packet on Friday, I'm recommending that it be postponed until February 19th. The ZBA meeting is uh, February 20th. So you would have time to make a recommendation to the ZBA about that project. So I, I doubt that it will be on for the 5th, but that's something that is yet to be determined. Thank you. Um, about planning board schedule, um, I know I had mentioned this to you and I, I just wanted to um, ask the board that I know it's only about to be February, but is your thinking about your summer plans? If you plan a vacation, you know you're going to be away, if you could send an email to Chris and I just to give us a heads up because last summer we had um, a lot of problems with everybody taking vacations at different times. And as people uh, let us know about that, we will let others know and hopefully we can coordinate or overlap some time that if you have any flexibility about your plans. I know I don't know what my plans are right now, but if anybody does, we can start that. So, thanks. Is there anything else on the schedule part? Um, well, there is one other thing which I think I've told you about previously, but I'll tell you about it again. We um, did receive, we received um, an application from um, Valley CDC to build uh, supportive housing on Northampton Road. It's an application to DHCD, which is the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, the application goes to them first, and what they get out of it is a project eligibility letter. So DHCD looks at the site and they figure out if the site is appropriate for this type of development and sort of what the intention of the applicant is and review it for, it's really for financing purposes. Um, <clears throat> so then if um, DHCD, which is the financing agency, um, agrees that this is a good location to make an application for and agrees that Valley CDC seems to have their business together, um, they will issue a letter and it's called the project eligibility letter. Mm -hmm. So that will come out probably sometime, we have 30 days to respond to Valley CDC's application and we'll, I'll be bringing it to the planning board at some point, I'm not sure exactly when, um, but we have 30 days to respond from the time that uh, DHCD notifies us that they've received this. So that's probably going to be sometime in mid-March. So sometime prior to mid-March, we will bring this project to you and you'll have an opportunity to, you know, make comments. Um, and we'll submit those with all the comments that we receive to DHCD. And then later on in the spring, um, we expect that the Zoning Board of Appeals will receive a Chapter 40B um, comprehensive permit application for this project. It's um, all affordable housing. It's 28 units of affordable housing, all below the 80% or less of AMI. Some of it is 50% or less, some is 30% or less, and some is for people who either are or are formerly homeless. So um, there's a different range of, of affordability there. But um, I, we, I shouldn't, uh, I think that there is support for this from town council. Town council has given um, given an approval for a five hundred thousand um, dollar amount of money to help the project. It's a CPAC uh, grant, um, and there have been other indications of approval for this type of project. We know we have a homelessness problem. We know we have a problem with low income housing, and so this is an effort to try to deal with that problem. Um, I think it's going to be a challenging um, process to get through because uh, neighbors are concerned um, and so we're, we're going we're gonna to hear a lot from neighbors but in any event and we'll hear from a lot of other people as well but in any event the reason I'm mentioning it to you is because again um, you will be asked to make a recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals about that comprehensive permit application. You did so for um, the North Square project. North Square is much bigger, um, but it was brought to you and you made a recommendation to the ZBA on that one. So, um, so that's something that will be coming forward. And 
Sure. So we'll see this project twice, like once before the DHCD letter and then before, as it's going into this in front of the ZBA. Okay. Is that one question, I had an email float through today about Amherst Media Building. And uh, it said on their blip six to eight weeks before it would come to planning board. But I wanted to ask you what you thought. <laughs> well, that's an interesting project. It did um, receive a lot of scrutiny from neighbors and from the town as a whole. Um, they did finally um, achieve their certificate of appropriateness the other night from the local historic district commission. Um, the district commission had a number of um, conditions that they put on it. I think there were like 15 conditions. Anyway, um, it is likely to be appealed. The decision is likely to be appealed. Um, and I don't know how that will affect uh, the timing of uh, a submittal to the planning board, but there's nothing that says the two processes, the local historic district process and the planning board process are completely separate. So there's nothing that says that it can't be filed with the planning board while it's going through this appeal process. So you may see that in six to eight weeks. I don't exactly know what their, um, what their timeline is. We haven't heard from them yet, but it would certainly come to the planning board as opposed to the ZBA. So that's, that was a good, a so good that question could be a mid to late March. Also. May, maybe, okay. yeah. May, mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And my last, just uh, to repeat from previous, when is the flood map thing coming our way? Because it seems so far away when you brought it up, but. So um, flood mapping will be presented for the first time to town council on February 10th, I believe. Okay. That's what yeah. we're scheduled for in any event. And that'll be, I will be presenting a first look to town council about the flood mapping project. We've already presented it to the public. Um, can't remember exactly when that was, but, um, and we've gotten reaction back from the public. And so town council is really gonna be taking a look at this for the first time. They'll probably have a lot of questions. Then our intention is, um, the, we are currently in an appeal period. So what that means is that we have our preliminary maps. Um, we received an, a letter from FEMA saying, here are your preliminary maps an appeal period is gonna start on X date. Well, the appeal period started sometime in November and there was a 90 day appeal period. We have it on the town website. We sent out notifications to all the people whose properties would be affected by this. Um, and the appeal period ends on February 20th. Um, at that point, um, FEMA will uh, send us a letter saying that the appeal period is over and no appeals have been filed, we hope. We're not sure of that. There could be appeals filed between now and uh, February 20th. But anyway, um, it, once the appeal period is over and all the appeals have been resolved, a six month, what do they call it, compliance period starts. And during the compliance period, the town needs to adopt the new maps. They need to adopt this, a new flood study that accompanies the maps and they need to adopt a set of zoning amendments that, um, that tells everyone what they can and can't do within this flood prone area. So I've been working on um, coming up with a text for the zoning amendment. We don't have that yet and I won't have it by February 10th. I'll just have a kind of conceptual idea of what it will be. Um, we do already have flood maps in the sense, well, we have two forms of flood maps. We have the old, um, FEMA flood maps from 1985. We have our flood prone conservancy district, which is mapped on our zoning map. Um, so those are two types of flood maps. The old FEMA maps will go away once we adopt these new maps, um, but we'll still have the FPC. And so at some point we'll want to deal with the F FPC and um, the hope is, the hope among staff is that we will um, coordinate the FPC, either have the FPC go away or somehow make it congruent with uh, the new FEMA flood maps. Um, we do also have a portion of our zoning bylaw that is related to the FPC zone. So at some point that will either need to be revised or um, deleted once the new um, flood zoning bylaw goes into effect. So all those details haven't been worked out yet 
but at some point during this six month period, certainly the zoning amendment will be brought to you and you will have to make a recommendation to town council as to whether you um, recommend passage of the zoning bylaw. You do not have a role in adopting the maps themselves, but you have seen the maps multiple times. Yeah. So that would probably be late spring, you're thinking, for, for our workload. Okay. I hope so, yeah. Great. Yeah, go ahead. So I know there's a lot of public projects happening downtown. Are you expecting any private applications or projects coming in? Um, one thing that's gonna come in is the um, playground at the Kendrick Park. That's being worked on by the Department of Public Works right now. Um, a gentleman down there who's trained as a landscape architect has been working on a plan and he'll be working with um, playground designers to design that playground. Um, so that has to go through design review board. It's probably gonna be shown to the DAAC because it's important that we get some handicapped accessible uh, equipment in there and um, then it would come to the planning board. So sometime, I'm guessing April, May, uh, that will be coming to the planning board. Um, we've been discussing North Square, I mean not North Square, the North Common. Um, that was one of the things that was presented to the town. I don't know if you all saw the town council meeting the other night, but town council had a presentation from Paul Bockelman, Dave Zomek, um, Jeff Kravitz, and I think that um, Gabrielle Gould from the bid was also there, but I didn't see her presentation. And they were presenting, they wanted to give town council um, an, an impression or um, a, a full look at all the projects that might happen downtown, both the private ones, privately funded ones, and publicly funded ones. And I think part of the reason is that um, there, the bid is offering to build a parking garage behind CVS. So um, that kind of changes the conversation about parking. There is some parking that would be lost as a result of the town common, the North Common project. So um, you know, if parking goes away there, then it would be added uh, a little bit uptown. Um, so uh, let's see what else we have on the, on the in that package. We also have um, work on the sidewalks and work on the crosswalks. We've recently received a $44,000 grant from MOD, which I forget what those initials stand for, but it's a state organization that makes um, money available to do renovations that relate to removing barriers. So we have several crosswalks in town that are really difficult to navigate. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna fix those and um, the walkway that goes uh, past Douglas Funeral Home that used, we used to call it Starbucks Walk, but Starbucks isn't there anymore. So anyway, that walk is in really bad condition, oh, and that's, that's one of the bad. things that's going to be Terrible. fixed as a result of these, uh, this project. Um, the band shell on the common, um, the mm -hmm. bid is offering to raise money to construct a band shell on the common. Uh, there's a location that's been bandied about for years. It was actually on a plan that was developed by Frederick Law Olmsted's uh, oh. company. So um, he showed a location. <laughs> right. um, and the bid is proposing to put a band shell there. Now that would have to go through a lot of permitting, mm -hmm. but it probably, it, depending on what the building commissioner thinks, it may or may mm -hmm. not come to you. It would certainly go to the design review board because right. it's you know, on town property. Um, I would probably recommend that it come to you, but I'm not sure that it's going to. So that's another thing. Um, what am I missing? That's, that's a lot. But anyway, if you wanted to find out more about it, you could look at the, um, the beginning portion of the town council meeting the other night. I think I tuned into it around 7 o'clock, and they were already talking about it. So somewhere a little before seven it started and it probably lasted for about 45 minutes but it's a very interesting concept to think about you know thinking about all these projects together and how they support each mm -hmm. other and make the downtown more vibrant and more attractive for people to come here and go out to dinner and spend some money so yeah. it's good thank you that's a a lot Whew. um Chris, make you talk even more now. This is Chris's exhaustion meeting here. Uh, number six, um, ANRs, subdivision applications. 
We do have an ANR, and I'm going to ask Pam to help me um, describe this to you. Maybe Pam mm -hmm. can uh, bring around the drawings. I'm going to I'm going to pass these, or do you want to show these, or should we just pass them along? The location of this is Newell Court, and a gentleman uh, by the name of Noah Kuhn wants to acquire property from um, a, an adjacent uh, property owned by Alan St. Hilaire. Um, he wants to have a garden there. He already owns a house, and his property is very small. So he wants to acquire some property from Alan St. Hilaire to allow him to have a little bit bigger yard and have a garden. Um, because these properties are all non-conforming, uh, their Newell Court isn't really a road, it's more of a driveway that provides access to these properties. Um, this had to go through the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the Zoning Board of Appeals has already approved this configuration, and um, now it's coming to you because the property needs to be carved off from Alan St. Hilaire's property and given to or sold to Noah Kuhn. Uh, so Pam is showing you the A&R plan. The solid lines indicate the, the lines that are being proposed. There are some dotted lines there that are um, lines that are going away. Um, so I think that's so, about it. Where, where the new part, did it belong to the, the next one? I'm sorry, where, where's the property going from? Like, where was it adjacent before? Line. The solid line. It was this right here. And mm -hmm. now purchase this part from, from his neighbor. Who is? You can see this is what it was. Okay. So they're cutting, that's where they're cutting yeah. okay. and giving to this guy. So there still remains the easement of that dirt road. I haven't been down that road a long time, but you can drive so that even though it's changing ownership, the dirt road would still be there. The roads are going to be there. There's some question about who has a right to pass and repass over that portion of the road that is to the, I believe it's to the west. Um, Alan St. Hilaire yeah. sold that road and the easement to the adjacent property owner to the west, and there's a dispute about who has access to that. It's currently open, uh. but periodically the property owner to the west puts up barriers to not allow people to pass through there. So. Those are all issues that are dealt with by the property owners. The town doesn't really have a role in dealing with those issues. They're one property owner to another. Um, but we do, we do have a role in um, changes to nonconforming properties, which is why the ZBA was involved. And now you have a role in um, endorsing this plan, which changes the property lines. But it really doesn't affect that easement that you were talking about, that dirt road. Though I do see a proposed 50-foot uh, diameter gravel turnaround for emergency and service vehicles, which makes sense to me if there's issues with who can and can't drive there, you, you would want to be able to get a fire truck or a, yeah. So, so that's is that been, part of this? And is that? Yes. That's been looked at by the fire department, and apparently it was satisfactory to the fire department. So that I, part of the new property, that the land that's being sold, that can't be developed because it's part of that 50-foot circle. It's a yeah, the, this this expand. It's that's more than a triangle. Circle, so it that's is not going to be developed. So they can't do anything. I don't they, believe. I think that they have to leave that um, blank without you know without planting anything there. But they have the other two um, trapezoids, or whatever you want to call them, that are going to be connected to right. number nine. This and this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I haven't been there, like I said, for a while, but from my recollection of turning here, it was not barricaded at the time, it was that this was kind of garden, like it is someone's yard right mm -hmm. now, so. I actually is, walked down there three oh, or four days ago, just by okay. chance. Wow. And, and it's, 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 it's accessible all the way through, yeah. uh, at least on foot. And I, as, I, I think a car could easily get through there at this point. It now, is. there are no barriers put up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never remember, I used to walk my dog on that when I lived in the Dickinson house. So I know that pretty well. And they've never, for, the, you know, for 10 years, there were never any barriers there. Um, uh, maybe it's since 19, well, 2000, uh, they may have gone up. Uh, from time to time, 
but um, it's it's a it's a simple drive through right now, you know, as as it is right now. Dirt, but yes. so I just yes. want to assure, be assured that these the new owners understand that even if they're utilizing this corner right now, mm -hmm. that when they this is part of it's they part can't of the it will have yeah. to be available available yeah. to so that you could drive because right I it's right. been a while I think there was like a little fence and there was like a garden like they were gardening in here uh, I think yeah. or maybe so that was that no that must have been here be kept for emergency vehicles okay open. Yep. and is that written in a memo with this I think or it's probably in the zoning board of appeals decision okay I don't have great it with me right now. So I won't worry about that. Someone took care of it. It's written down somewhere. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Complicated. So do you authorize the chair to sign, endorse the plan? Thank you. Yes, we should do that. Good. All right. Good. If you want to see those. So uh, any other ANRs? No other a and R's. Okay. What about item seven? Any upcoming ZBA applications? Nothing that we haven't already told you. Great. Um, item eight, upcoming SPP, SPR, SUBs applications. None that I know of. There are always <laughs> things in the wings, but um, <laughs> nothing that I know of at this time. Okay. Uh, so we'll go to item nine, planning board committee and liaison reports. And the first one is uh, PVPC, Jack. Uh, the next meeting is February 13th. Um, and I don't remember what the agenda is. Well, I guess- Hasn't come out hasn't yet. Hasn't come out yet. Mm. Uh, CPA, have they met? Uh, yes. Uh, um, CPAC is in the middle of its uh, review of projects, proposals for the uh, next budget cycle. We're having a public meeting tomorrow uh, on all of the uh, on all of the projects, beginning at six o'clock in the police station. Uh, oh, in the police station. Yes, uh, and the um, re the uh, our our assumption is the re recommendations will be available in about two weeks or three at the most. Good work. Uh, David's not here, so I won't ask about the Agricultural Commission. Uh, Design re uh, Review Board. Been no meeting since yeah. our last meeting. Okay. And there was no zoning subcommittee, so we can move to, uh, wow, we're doing good, report of the chair. Um, I just, uh, I don't know if I'm probably stealing Chris's thunder, but I was just going to say I'm excited that we're going to get a new member, mm -hmm. right? Who? Um, he has to get sworn in, and uh, Chris is going to give him an orientation, but hopefully he'll join us maybe the 5th. I hope he will join you on the 5th. Yes. That's Doug Marshall. So um, great. We're back up to 7, which is always good news. Um, and I just wanted to comment, you know, my thing I'm following. Uh, an email went out that the uh, Governor Baker's bill 3507 is now 4263. So. I'll keep you updated as it keeps morphing and being adjusted. But there's a lot of good stuff in there for us. Um, and we went over the meetings. Okay, that's all I have. Report of staff. So people have been asking about um, the Chapter 40R and the process related to Chapter 40R. So as you all know, um, the Housing Trust and town staff applied for a grant I think it was in 2018, and we did receive, it was a, a housing choice grant that um, was related to housing production. Um, the state is very eager to have cities and towns build housing for the people who um, come here to find jobs. Um, if they come here to find jobs and can't find housing, then they move on, they go somewhere else. So it's very important to the governor and the and lieutenant governor and others that um, housing be built. So. Um, so we have this grant. We hired um, consultants who have been working with us on um, locating um, places for affordable housing throughout town, but they've also been working with us on the concept of 40R. And the 40R concept is essentially that it's an overlay zone that is allowed by the state, but would be adopted by the town as a zoning amendment. Um, and within the overlay zone, uh, certain 
mm, dimensional modifications would be allowed in, uh, in exchange for providing um, either 20 or 25 percent affordable housing. It depends on the configuration of the project. Um, it's allowed in zones that are already zoned for this type of um, development, but it allows a denser type of development. Um, for some cities and towns which have a very low um, allowance for density, they can also reap the benefit from, uh, from the state getting uh, payments for um, the number of units that would be allowed in the 40R district versus the number of units that are already allowed. In any event, um, the town of Amherst has been working with consultants to investigate what a 40R is and whether it might be appropriate for the town. Um, I think it's been a very enlightening experience and prior to this, people had brought up 40R right and left and we didn't really know what it was. So now we know what it is. Um, the consultants have been here with us three times already, starting in, I think it was June, and I can't remember the exact dates, but anyway, they've held three public forums about this type of um, zoning. Um, we feel like we've become familiar with it. The consultants have heard from people in the town, they've heard from staff about what we think about this. They're going to be coming back for a fourth meeting sometime in the next two months. February, March, somewhere in there. We'll, we're going to hold another public forum. What the intent at that time is to um, bring forth a draft of a potential zoning amendment that would incorporate um, dimensional requirements and design guidelines for a 40R district. The current 40R district that we've been studying is um, based around the downtown. It includes the BG, most of the BG, but not all of it and two of the um, business limited zones that abut the BG. Um, the last time the consultants were here, they presented some ideas of what buildings might look like. Um, the town is in complete control. I want to emphasize that because I have the feeling that people are fearful about 40R coming and somehow descending on us and not having us you know, have any say in it. I and mean, the fact is that there is going to be a concept for design guidelines, concept for a zoning amendment presented to us, but there's no, um, no sort of cudgel hanging over our heads saying we must accept this. Um, whatever is given to us, we have every right and every reason and time to analyze it and see if it's the right thing. If it's not the right thing, there may be aspects of it that we do want to adopt. We as staff are particularly in, intrigued by the um, design guidelines. We have struggled in the past to get form-based code ac adopted and um, haven't been successful, but it's been a number of years since that effort. So there may be something about these design guidelines that will help us to get a grip on some of the new um, development that's happening in town. The other thing that the 40 r does is it mandates that you include affordable housing. And so it's one way to get affordable housing downtown. So that may be an aspect of it that is enough of a sort of a carrot that people will be willing to accept other aspects of it. So there's a lot of discussion that needs to happen. Um, we're reaching the end of our process with the consultants, but we certainly haven't reached the end of the process with discussion about this, whether it's appropriate for Amherst, whether the downtown is the right location, what aspects of it do, do we like, what aspects don't we like, and then you know, shaping something, if we decide to go forward with it, shaping something that is beneficial to our town and not a cookie cutter from some other town. When would some, this come to us? Like when would we get to give feedback or thought on it? Well, um, I believe it would be best to wait until we get the zoning, the draft text of the zoning bylaw and the design guidelines, and then um, you'd have a complete package of what is being proposed, and then you could chew on it and decide, yes, we want to look at this further and decide whether it, we really could make it work for us, or no, it just seems too outlandish and not of the scale that Amherst is interested in having. Um, I think it's probably up to the planning board to make an initial determination about whether it's appropriate or not. Of course, we could get a 
petition article saying, yes, we want this, and you know, that would have to be reacted to. But I think probably in reality, it's going to initi be initiated by the planning board, if, if anything. Um, so, but you know, so we'll have a full consultant's report with their recommendations yes. and mm -hmm. this example of what could be a bylaw and that kind yes. of thing. And then we can actually start to take it apart and think of pros and cons, and of course, public mm -hmm. hearings so people could come and yes, even though these meetings are all public that they're having too. But right, so okay. there are disadvantages to the 40R, and one disadvantage is that. Once you decide on your design guidelines and the other guidelines that go along with it, you have to live with that. So um, there is an opportunity for review of projects, um, by, probably by the planning board. Uh, and but the review is, you know, does this project meet the guidelines? So there's not a lot of flexibility or a lot of discretion. Um, okay. So that may be something that we would question. I, personally, I question that. I would need to see how it works in other communities to know whether this is something that I think Amherst would be benefited by. Um, so, so that's what we saying, would start to craft that's what you pros, would, and yes, cons, pros and cons, and then yep. Mm -hmm. yep. work from there with other suggestions from people and, exactly. and you all. Yeah. Okay. So I think Ms. McGowan oh. had a question. Yes. So Mr. Stutzman was on this. Like the, I looked at the RFP for this, the um, consultants thing, and it had somebody from the Amherst Municipal Housing Trust and somebody from the planning board. And so did, that, did his participation end the planning board's participation in that? Because I don't think he was there as planning board. So, he, so there were two members of the planning board who participated in this initially, and I think they only went to one meeting. It was Greg Stutzman and um, Rob Crowner, and they went to a meeting, I believe it was in the summer of 2018, and after that, um, planning board participation was not part of this um, process, and why that is, I, why, I don't that, really, I, I well, am not, um, I guess I'm not familiar enough with all of the details that uh, proceeded and all the meetings and everything that you know went along why decisions were made I don't really understand um, so I don't remember us really being asked uh, I mean the planning board as a whole wasn't asked no. I think those two individuals were asked because of their knowledge of planning planning principles I don't think they were necessarily you know representatives of they the weren't. planning board they weren't chosen by the planning board mm -hmm. to be part of this group. I think it was really, I don't even know if it was uh, put together by the town manager or by, you know, who, who actually invited well, Greg was actually a member of the housing. He was working with John. That's how That's Greg right. was there. So he was yes. representing, he was so a planning was board member, but he was the housing there trust. representing the housing. And exactly. Rob Crowner was brought in because he knows a lot about zoning. Okay, I don't. Um, so it wasn't really like the planning board voted to mm -hmm appoint these people to participate in this process, it was really more like, oh, these two people know a lot about you know, housing and zoning, let's bring them in. And I don't remember who made that decision. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember it really coming up at planning board. But. So, so, oh, so I, I just read the RFP and it said the consultant would work with the planning board and mm. the, so I just read that, so I assumed since it's a sort of a major um, project or initiative, the planning board would be part of it. Um, I'm, I have a lot of concerns. One of them is that um, the RFP and the, all the, I've only gone to, I think, three out of the f four, I've missed one of the presentations by the consultants, but they constantly emphasize working with members of the community and working with the neighborhood on design guidelines and preserving the look of the thing. And then when I, the last time, the last one I went to, there were very, very few people from the neighborhoods in, around downtown, and so, and I think, um, and I, I think that was an oversight because if it had been picked as a site, it seems pretty easy just to give notice to people who live in in around downtown. Um, some of the people who had come to that meeting were very concerned that the buildings were just really big, and they were, you know, they had somehow the consultants had picked the arts block, you know, three-story buildings as that's the look that's going to go through downtown and f sort of forgetting that there's small houses and you know there's you know the Antonio's building and kind of the look of downtown is more varied 
in terms of architectural styles and heights. And so people are, there are people who are like, we, this doesn't look like a New England town. It doesn't look like Amherst. And so my concern is that the um, consultants, maybe they heard that message and they've gone off. I didn't get that impression from talking to the architect that he got that. And then also that people who are in this community that you know we promised in the master plan and the consultants come in and say, we're going to talk to you and, and build something that fits what you want to look. And then they leave and two months later they come back with something else. And so I think that is there some interim step to get that, in, that view or people still involved right now or, and not go get a full package that doesn't reflect people and creates tension and conflict that we see over and over and again. Um, the other concern I had, which also uh, former members of the planning board thing, is that the overlay district won't work in the BG because there's no incentive for owners to, you know, they already can build a five-story building without affordable housing they don't have to provide parking. So what's the incentive to provide parking 20 to 25% affordable housing and still have five stories? And they can you know, obviously get their waivers and setbacks. So half of this zoning district isn't gonna get you what you want. And so it just seems like a very, it didn't make sense to me to include the BG unless there's owners who are really wanting to provide 20% you know, of affordable housing. So. A lot of the decisions about the siting, I sort of had questions about, like, oh, will it work? And also, this is our first VR. Why would you pick half of the downtown to do an overlay district when, you know, Northampton started with one building? And so I, I just wondered about the process or the results. And I thought the planning board should be involved a lot earlier and be discussing this much earlier. And, you know, you can say we can do it later, but I, it's, if people feel like this process is going on without their involvement, it's not going to bode well for, you know, months down the way. So maybe there's a chance to do a stop and do it differently. So the planning board members have been invited to all of the forums, and I think, you know, they've been given a specific invitation. I've sent an email to all the planning board members and, and all the Amherst Redevelopment Authority members to attend the meetings. And, and I feel like the planning board members, if they wanted to, could have said, oh, let's have a meeting about this process at some point along the line. Well, that was actually my next statement. It was, it'd be good for us to see that presentation and maybe have a meeting. That, you know. Earlier than um, when we received the zoning and, you know, the next phase? It just seems like a lot of work could go into designs that people, you know, I mean, to be completely honest, every person I've showed that presentation to has said something like, oh my God you know, at the size of the buildings um, on near Cottage Street. I mean, people have been stunned by that. And so, you know, we might see it and say, oh, I'm not stunned, but I think that we should, we should be on top of it and involved and know what the presentation is and talk about it and say, you know, I think this is too much. Or, you know, I don't think four-story buildings lining the town. And also, they don't look like the arts block. You know, so there's a lot of questions I had and a lot of times you go to those forums, it's an hour of presentation, there's small group discussion, and then it's over. Can I just remind everyone what Chris said, that the consultant is gonna come forward with their professional experience of 40 hours and how a 40 hour would work here. And as Chris said, it, it may be too much. That let, could be the whole point. Like, we wouldn't want to say to them, oh, make it a 40-hour mini, like, because that's not the point. A 40-hour is robust. That's how it works. And you're right. Like, in the BG, it's already five, so what would you have to do? And, you know, give the incentive of a sixth floor. That's how it works. And that might, that's probably too much, but that's why this report, I'm very interested in seeing it and sort of looking at it, because as Chris said, we could just be like, oh, this is too much. We don't want this. Or we could be like, we want it. Or we could be like, okay, we just like these bits here. Kind of like you were talking about the design guidelines might be something that you guys can gleam a lot of good stuff out of. But So I'm sort of like, the professionals are doing their job. They do 40 hours. I'm really looking forward to their report. And then I do hope, if it says in the RFP, I, I would hope that they could come and answer some of our questions after we've sort of got it and we're digesting it and going, well, why do you have this so big? Why do you have this here? So 
We were um, analyzing several locations. One of them was University Drive. That's One was true. East Amherst near the Florence Savings Bank. One was North Amherst up by, um, you know, North Square. I forget what the other one was. There might have been another one. Uh, downtown. So there were a number of criteria that we were looking at. And in the end, I think two of the locations sort of matched most of the criteria. And we had to choose one, so we chose downtown. I think we were mostly looking at development potential in the BL district, because currently the BL district that abuts downtown doesn't allow any type of residential development there. I mean, there is residential development oh. there, but it's all non-conforming. So we were looking at it really to, with the eye that, well, maybe somebody would like to, um, you know, somebody who owns part of a property in the BG and buys something or owns something in the BL could make something sort of out of both of them. Um, so really just included the BG so that it would be, you know, the properties wouldn't be, um, how can I say this? Well, there'd be one continuous very well. overlay, I think a you're saying. A continuous overlay. Yeah. That, yeah, instead of having little, little ones. Um, <laughs> Pockets. So, you know, it may be in the end that we decide that, no, it just doesn't work for the downtown. For one thing, it doesn't work for the BG district because there's no incentive, there's no monetary incentive to the town to do it there because mm -hmm. there's not going to be a differential between the amount of dwelling units that you could get currently and the ones that you could get in uh, 40R. There would be a differential in the BL. There would be a differential in the BL. And there's a pretty big area of BL north of Triangle Street, and there's a reasonable size area of BL um, west of the downtown. Yeah. So those two areas are areas that have been kind of eating at us for a long time. Developers, owners come to us and say, I want to build a building that has residential units in it, and they can't. So they come to us with the office building that was proposed for 236 Halleck Street or North Pleasant Street. Anyway, you know the Kuhn Middle yeah, building. Yeah. Um, that building hasn't been built. If residential units were allowed there, they would have built that building. Yeah. But they could only build offices there, so they can't find tenants for those offices. So this was really an attempt to say, oh, well, how, would, would 40R help those districts? We can turn around and say, we would rather look at East Amherst. And East Amherst is an interesting situation. You have to have underlying zoning that allows the type of development that you're proposing. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can't do this out in Echo Hill or something like that. <laughs> the underlying zoning has to allow mixed use and commercial and retail and all of that. So um, the East Amherst has these little slivers of commercial that line College Street. It doesn't really have big areas that you could actually develop. What is behind College Street? The strip mall is wetland. So, um, and you know from looking at Mr. Amir's property that there were, or um, Mr. McChee's property, that there were a lot of wetlands <laughs> over there. So there's limited potential in East Amherst. There may be potential on properties like um, the old motel that is currently an apartment complex. So that's a possibility. You know, we might want to look at that. There may be a possibility um, for redeveloping, you know, the gas station and that mixed-use building that's behind the gas station. So there are potential development areas in East Amherst. Um, there weren't uh, necessarily willing um, developers, and that was one of the things we were looking at. We knew there were willing developers in downtown, willing property owners who were willing to engage in this kind of um, endeavor. In um, Pomeroy Lane intersection, there's really not that much property available for development other than hmm. property that is already tied up in ownership situations that are not flexible at this point. They're not liquid. Um, property owners down there have expressed interest in doing certain things, but they can't do them for 10 years because of estate issues. And so, as I said, one of the things that we were, one of the criteria that we were looking at was willing property owners, mm -hmm. and we had willing property owners in the downtown. So that might have been one of the big factors why we went with downtown. North Amherst is already experiencing a lot of development, and the properties that are available still in North Amherst are also tied up. Um, the Joneses own a lot of property up there, but they're not in any, um, they're not eager to develop things that, say, on the 
east side of Montague Road. They have Riverside Apartments. They have the Riverside Shops. They're not interested in redeveloping those right now. Um, other properties on Sunderland Road, um, there was the old Jernigan uh, building that was falling down that mm. you know was an old um, auto repair place. Well, that was recently bought by somebody who's running a landscape business out of there. So he's, he's putting that to good use. So it wasn't clear that there were willing property owners and you know, potential sites up in North Amherst right now. There may be in the future, but right now we had the willing property owners in the downtown who were interested in seeing if something could, could be developed there. So that's a long way of saying you know, we had a lot of options for different places in town. D um, downtown was the one we said, you yeah, know, let's try it. Um, if people don't like it, we don't have to go there. It's just, it's a choice that we can make. No nobody's forcing anything on us. Um, it was something that, as I said, for years, pl the planning board, planning board members, zoning subcommittee members had said, why don't we try 40R? And we didn't know what it was. So this was an opportunity to find out what is it, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, would it work for us, where might it work for us. We'll come up with something and then we can decide whether we want to do it or not, where we want to do it. We'll have, we'll have tools. <laughs> we'll know what the design guidelines might be. And they might not be five-story buildings that look like they belong in Watertown. Um, they might be something else that's more you know, t typical of our town. So I just want to make sure that you understand nobody's forcing this on us. Nobody's um, requiring us to do anything with it. It's an opportunity that's being offered. It's like an educational opportunity in my, in my mind. It and was free I, money. And it was free money <laughs> to examine this. And, and also, I am not, um, you know, I, I listen to a lot of people. I am not listening to a lot of people who say, rah, rah, 40R, let's go for it there's not a groundswell of people who are saying that. There may be certain property owners and certain developers who are, but the overall population is not that enthusiastic. So, you know, there has to be a certain level of enthusiasm for things for town staff to really want to move forward. And this may be something where we, we, we tried it and we said, you know what, that's probably not for us. So that's kind of where I'm at right now with it. I'm glad you explained the downtown selection because I do remember in the last forum the consultant saying when they ran their matrix and uh, they, it was really close. Mm -hmm. They said the downtown edged out a little bit more but actually all of the locations had enough positives that matrix number why they all came in pretty close. So that makes sense now why they went with the downtown because of developers or whatever. But thank you for that. Um, Michael, do you have a question? I yeah, it's a, picking up on what Janet said a minute ago, um, the notion of our responding to a finished proposal um, is one thing. The notion of our responding toward the end of a process after which a finished proposal will be developed is another thing. And it seems to me that uh, if, if there's any interest on the board in support of this, of this process, of this idea, anyway, um, and I am. If if it res if it actually results in an increase in affordable housing, I'm certainly in favor of the idea. Um, I wonder if we might get further down the road uh, more expeditiously if we were to have a presentation from the consultants prior to their completion of the final report, that we could then give them some feedback on that and and tweak a few things or make some suggestions, or maybe just accept it wholesale. I don't know. I don't know what the, re what the report's going to end up being. But um, if the goal is to give this good consideration and hopefully adopt it if it's um, to the benefit of the town, um, I think it might be good in the long run for us to have a, a look at it and a, a shot at discussing it as a body. I know we've all had the opportunity to talk about it individually at these meetings. I've been to a few of them myself. Um, but that's a different kind of situation. You break up into little groups, and the little groups get talked about, and then the, all that information gets back to the, to the consultants. And um, who knows what happens. If the, if the board were to make, uh, if the planning board were to make a kind of 
statement, a unified statement about one aspect of this, it would seem to me it have more weight than uh, a, um, a comment coming out of one of the corners of the room uh, written out on a whiteboard and then passed on to the consultants. So I, I would like to see if, if, it's, if it fits the timeline of the consultant's contract, uh, us to have uh, a discussion with the consultants prior to the issuance of their final report uh, with the planning board. I can ask for that. I know they've stretched their budget um, to come. They've been here three times, and they had three meetings in their budget. Um, they're going to be coming a fourth time, so that's an additional time. I can certainly ask them if they would do this, um, but I can't guarantee that they would because they had a you know, particular scope of work that they were working towards. I just want to, it reminds me a little bit that if we only do get it as the final, their recommendations, so this reminds me of the parking report that recently came out, and the consultant brings this huge report of all these recommendations, and then they give it to the town, and then the town figures out what to do. You know, there were eight major sections, and then there were three to six suggestions under each one of those topics. So. It's up to the town to decide, like, to prioritize, to pick which ones initiatives they want to take on, and then to prioritize them. So, in a way, that's what I feel like we would do. We're going to get this recommendation, and then we have to sort of decide if what parts of it we want. Like, I don't think it's like a this is what you get, and this is you know we would vote yay or nay to accept it. I don't think this comes in as a it's not a plan or a proposal. It's more like a recommendation, Jack. Uh, I assume that the re <clears throat> report would detail everything that you said in terms of the process. I'm not sure we're going to get a report. I was speaking to Nate Malloy, who's more ah. um, close to this project than I have been. Um, and the way he described it is that we may get design guidelines and um, the zoning amendment and um, a memo describing you know, okay. how this process worked, how it came about, how many times they came out here who they met with, et cetera. So we may not get a full-blown report. I'm not sure. Um, so that I would like the matrix. A ma the, the matrix. The ma like how they ranked and all the criteria they used. Because that would be helpful information down the road for the town to have. But go ahead, Michael. Um, if, if what we're going to get is a proposed zoning bylaw and proposed design guidelines, uh, it seems like all the more reason for us to have a conference with them prior to the, mm -hmm. to the development of that, because it's once the once the, a zoning bylaw is written, it seems to me it's difficult to unpack uh, and, and edit uh, because it's usually pretty yeah. self pretty contained. It seems to me. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's. I would think we would handle it like if I look at all the others we used to do through the articles for a town meeting. Revisions after revisions after revisions after revisions. So, to me, it's just a lump of clay that shows up as a starting point, if anything. And we may not even go that route. Like it's just a suggestion, because the way that I've worked through Z, uh, zoning subcommittee and with the, I mean, you said you're the one. You know, Chris. This it, they keep changing all the way up until the end. So I don't think it's a, I think it's just professionals giving an example from their previous experience working with other towns that do do 40 hours all the town. And like I said, I want them to be very honest and very best practice in what other towns are using because then we're looking at it honestly and we might, like you're saying, just be like, this is not for us. I don't want it to get too tailored at this point. Do you as a body want me to inquire about whether yeah. the consultants are willing yeah. to come out and talk to you? Okay. So if I will they have do the that. budget, I think that's just, you know, it's late in the game here. When do they think, you think uh, within the month they'd be done? So before Christmas they were talking about coming out in February. Yeah. But I really haven't had any contact with them since, when did they come out last time? Oh, it was early it was December. Was it December 19th? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was December 19th. So I haven't had any um, communication with them since then. Does Nate? And Nate may have, um, but certainly they haven't chosen any dates for coming. So I'm suspecting that it's probably going to be 
March rather than February since we haven't heard anything from them. We usually try to establish a date at least a month in advance so we know we're not you know, bumping up against something that the town council is doing or something that the other boards and committees are doing. Um, so I will, I'll see if they're able to come uh, yeah, talk to you. Yeah, and ask, if you're at talking to them and asking if they can, also try to get a timeline from them. I mean, if, if they are thinking of coming in, in a month, well, that's not that far out, but if it is gonna be like two months, maybe they could come since they're still sort of working on the job. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, I support the 40-hour concept, and I think it'd actually be great in East Amherst since it's, it fits a lot of the criteria that was presented about lots of parking lots, mismatched buildings, kind of underbuilt. Um, hard to walk around, um, a lot of people living there, you know, things like that. And I actually brought this up three years ago at a zoning subcommittee when this idea of a 40R was first proposed. And it was presented like, oh, let's look at this as a thought experiment for downtown Amherst on, you know, North Pleasant Street by Kendrick Park. And that, you know, so we started, the committee started talking about that. And I kept on saying, you know, there's all these other parts in town that this would be great. It'd be great on University Drive, be in East Amherst. North Amherst, and it kept on coming back to downtown. And one of the residents who comes to zoning subcommittee said, you know, what starts out as a thought experiment in a couple of years, you know, when we're looking at downtown for the 40R, in a few years it becomes like, oh, we've been talking about this for years, and suddenly it's in place. And I think that that almost feels like a prophecy to me. I think that people in this neighborhood around where we're sitting were promised that they would be part of the process and they haven't been. And I think that they need to be giving feedback to the, to, to the, to the um, consultants. And the feedback that came at the last meeting was, is there, one person said, is there a way we can give comments online to the consultants? People were worried about the losing, I mean, they just, all the things, you know, about the look and the facades and the small town feel and whatever. So have the consultants taken that? and. It's one thing to sort of get a presentation at the end of a project. It's a little disturbing if it's in your neighborhood and you haven't really been notified about it or been part of it. But it, to me, if someone at the planning board was at the table working with the consultants for the last year or so and bringing updates to the planning board, we could have been providing feedback and saying maybe the site's not going to work or maybe we should start smaller or maybe we should do university drive. And so. I don't want all this work to be lost and, and, and people downtown feeling like this is gonna be like a bombshell for them. And I kind of try to put this on the agenda for tonight and there were some people that wanted to come and talk about it at the neighborhoods, but it wasn't on the agenda. And now it's, you know, so I'm sort of feeling like, can we have some process that involves the community in a way that they feel like they're actually sitting at the table, hearing information, not after it's been designed. And so I think that we're lurking into that territory very much by not. Maria. I don't understand how they had all these public meetings and that was the place for them to bring their ideas. And People, I, I now no, so that the, um, don't, Janet, the idea is that, like, I, I really like what you said, Chris, that this is an education. You know, we're learning about what 40 R is. We're learning about how it would work in a certain setting, in a context. We'll be able to see form-based zoning, which I'm really excited about. So I think it's an education. You can't look at it as like, this is set in stone, and why doesn't it work for everybody in Amherst? It works for how 40 R is designed to work for um, this, the way you look at it through the lens of urban planners. So if they were to design it to the scale of Amherst, it wouldn't be, if, a sort of successful 40-hour project in the way of maximizing the land use. So I think, yeah, it's going to appear large because that's inherent in what 40 hours are. And to say that neighbors weren't alerted, it seems strange because there's, you know, four, three, or three public meetings where everyone was notified. I mean, it was very a public process. Everyone could join in. So without making it seem like a uh, site plan review or a special permit where they send letters out to abutters, I don't know how much more public they could have made it as far as you know outreach and getting feedback um, they are professionals and you don't want to handhold them too much you kind of want them to do their job and so 
there's a fine line between you know a helicopter over you know consultants versus letting them tell us what the best practices are. So I, I, I hear what you're saying about you know couldn't have this been more of a collaborative effort, but I I'm not sure this budget allowed for that very fine tooth kind of you know let's look at every parcel around um, what we're studying. I think they're looking at it like here's what 40R can give you. You know so you got to kind of look at it from a, a step back. It can't. You can't sort of microscopically examine what they've given us. So I have two points. Just I want to remind everyone that there were three public meetings, but it wasn't until the last one, the third one, that they dove deep on the on the downtown. That was because they had gotten to the point where they had done the matrix, and that's why I was saying they all kind of were the same, but they had chosen to pursue the downtown one. So that didn't happen until December 19th, and I just also want to say to everybody, you know, that uh, the consultant made it clear that you could submit email, you know, right in, I mean, can be snail mail too, but, um, you know, communicate that way and they are collecting, actively collecting, and Nate Malloy makes sure that all the comments that come in to town hall um, get forwarded. So, you know, if there are people out there who are feeling like they're, they're, you know, not being communicated to. I will say right now, I didn't know really much about 40R, and this is an education process for me, and that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm looking forward to more, as whether it be memos and, and draft design guidelines and bylaws. I'm this is a learning process for me so that we can better evaluate how we're going to move forward, and I, I agree with you, Janet. I'm sort of like, I see good things, and there's issues where I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. So I think we're, I don't know how much I would have been able to tell these professionals like what to write about 40R because I'm sort of learning. And, um, but I do trust that they're professionals and they deal with lots of towns doing this. So I look forward to being educated. I have a memory, and I think it's a real memory, that we actually <laughs> sent um, notices to property owners whose property would be Ooh. affected and people who had property within 300 feet of the area that would be affected. Okay. I can check that with Nate, but I'm pretty sure we did that mm -hmm. because we felt like, well, here we are proposing a change to this mm -hmm. area, and we feel like people should know about it. So I'm going to confirm that, and I'll report back to you next time we meet. And for that fourth meeting, that probably should be pursued, that you make sure that you know now that the downtown is the one that they're focusing on, that the letters go out about that, the last meeting there. Because this was an add-on. They were only going to do three, and now they're, yeah, OK. Could, could, could we, we sent contact residents, not just property owners? I mean, the people in the Clark House and Wayland, there's two historic districts. There's no way. We, we can um, send it's cause it, it, notices to owners and ask them to post it in a prominent location. That's what we do when, when we send a butter's notices. If um, and a butter happens to be a multi-family house, we send it to the owner, and then the owner is asked to post it so that people know about it. So I'm just giving the feedback that there were people who were very active in the downtown who did not know about the meeting on the December 19th. And it's one thing to contact a property owner. It's another thing to, to contact a resident. And we have street lists we could send notices to, or there's lots of ways to reach people. I'm if, gonna, we're, if we're really interested in working with our community. I'm going to also pitch out there the town website. You can go on and set your email. I have all of them almost turned on for myself. So sometimes I get a little like, oh, God, another town email. But um, if you really want to stay on the pulse and know about different meetings and stuff, I highly recommend trust the town, put your email in, and, and set up all your little alerts and updates. And keep checking the calendars. Um, so at this point... You know, I think Chris is going to go off and ask some questions and get a little bit more information either from Nate or the consultants. And uh, next week, you probably will have some more information with us. So um, I think that's 40R for tonight. So I would love to say adjournment. Do I hear? Uh... Oh, yes. I... Oh, you what? have something? No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> but I'm just wondering, uh, the, the master plan, mm. I thought we were going to talk about the master plan That's today. next. So the oh, next okay. meeting, there will be a whole, like, mm, Chris has been working on a process, so there'll be information we'll get in our packet, and we'll try to figure yeah, out what not, we're doing. It's not in the agenda, obviously, but I... No. Uh, we were trying to keep this planning board light, Jack. Well, congratulations. <laughs> 
Well, we might finish in an hour you and a half. You did it. Better than the last four hour one. <laughs> so do I hear a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I move to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? I assume yes, good. Thank you. Thank you, Amherst Media.